Earlier we talked about the cotton crop and how good it was in southwest Oklahoma, but Randy, there were some issues with some, some blights in the cotton this year. Yeah, Dave, we actually had a problem with bacterial blight, which is a xanthomonas species. This particular disease has, has been in the cotton patch for many, many decades. We've typically uh, controlled this disease through resistant or immune type varieties. Mm -hmm. It's not really been a major problem since the seed companies began acid delining several decades ago. So really it's kind of been de-emphasized somewhat, but bacterial blight, is, it's almost always out there it, mm -hmm. in, in susceptible varieties. I can walk into a lot of fields in a lot of years and find it. But what happened this year was that we had a very uh, wet July period and on into August we had very cool temperatures and of course this bacteria likes uh, kind of cooler than normal and more humid than normal conditions and you know we certainly had a lot of that this year. It, it typically starts out on the leaves. We'll see a lot of leaf defoliation, premature defoliation and then ultimately it can move over to the to the fruiting branches and perhaps even on the main stem. It can actually get on the bowls. This is a very prime example of, of what happened with this particular plant. We, we see that this is the first position bowl coming mm -hmm. uh, off on this fruiting branch and it's basically, its production has been destroyed and that's probably a one-two whammy of number one, not having any leaf area there right. to provide the carbohydrates to fill the bowl. And number two, we probably had a lesion in here that affected uh, the integrity of the bowl itself and essentially the, the bowl part of it may have gotten digested and then we may have had some secondary saprophytic fungi come in and kind of colonize the bowl and set up this bowl rot. We've looked at a lot of our variety trials. We compared the susceptible varieties and the resistant or immune varieties based on Dr. Terry Wheeler's publication from the Texas A&M Center at Lubbock. And the good news is, is that the varieties that were considered susceptible in her trial were typically susceptible and the, the better news is is that the varieties that were considered resistant uh, were resistant and we really didn't see any substantial incidence of bacterial blight in those varieties. You actually saw a, a difference in dry land versus irrigated cotton too. Well typically of course under irrigated conditions the humidity in that canopy stays uh, very high. Mm -hmm. uh, the dry land typically doesn't uh, it doesn't canopy over as we say and because it's open uh, we just tend to get a little bit more evaporation in there and it may not uh, uh, certainly have quite the humidity level that our irrigated fields would have. Uh, based on what we've seen this year with some typically high yielding fields in the irrigation district these fields m probably should have made in the neighborhood of three to maybe three and a half bales per acre. Right. We're actually seeing production in some of these hardest hit fields of about uh, two bales per acre. Uh, you know, if, we, if we're making two bales per acre, we're only...